As journalists, we have such a powerful platform to showcase untold stories and talents of unique people and communities. And for me, deaf culture holds a very special place in my heart because I grew up in a home filled with teachers for the deaf. So when I see deaf actors like Daniel Durant get the opportunity to take on authentic portrayals of deaf people, like his role in this Oscar-winning film, Coda, the impact of what he's doing goes far beyond the movie theater. Daniel has broken barriers from Broadway to the big screen, and now the ballroom. Take a look. Oh yeah, now in the top eight of ABC's Dancing with the Stars, Daniel Durant joins me live from New York. Daniel, it's so great to have you here. <laughs> hey, really, I'm so excited to be here. All right, so tell me the truth. Did you really take secret dance classes to prepare for this? Yeah, when I first found out that I was gonna be on Dancing with the Stars, the first person I texted was Marley Matlin because she's been on. She was the first deaf person on Dancing with the Stars. So I let her know that I was going to be involved and she FaceTimed me right away. <laughs> and she let me know I need to go work out and I need to take dance lessons because I've never danced before. So it was nice for me to get a basic idea of some dance steps and what things are going to be like to prepare for Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Well, you're doing an amazing job. And by challenging yourself with Dancing with the Stars, do you think you've learned to love music and dance in different ways that you never imagined? Well, first of all, I'm not sure if it was a challenge because, of, because I was deaf. Everyone has their own challenges on the show, I'm learning. But also, yeah, I learned a lot about myself. I've always felt the vibration if I go dancing, like in the car, or anywhere, but for performing, I don't depend on the beat. I don't depend on any vibration or cues or anything like that because it's distracting for me. So my wonderful partner, Britt, this is her name sign. We figure out how to train some parts of the dance and how to change the tempo. And I have to memorize all of that in me like a script. And then I dance it and I make sure I hit my marks. Well, you have been hitting your marks. And, you know, let's talk about Britt for just a second. Her ASL, by the way, is awesome. So I have to know, are you teaching her signs? Yes, as she teaches you dance steps. Tell me how you two are enriching each other through this experience. Really, Britt is an amazing person. This is her name sign because she has such a huge heart and she's a brilliant woman. The first time I met Britt, she was so friendly and she had such an open mind, it was obvious. So she started learning ASL right away. I taught her and as the weeks went by, you hear my voice here, my interpreter, that's Gabe. And he's part of our team. And now he doesn't need to interpret for Brit. So he leaves us alone and Brit and I just conversate. And you're right, she teaches me dance and I teach her ASL at the same time and we grow together. And I can't believe it's been more than only more than a month, maybe a month and a half. And I feel like I've known her my whole life. She's a great partner and a great teammate. Well, I know you're, you also are working a lot with deaf kids. And I wanna know how the success of CODA and now Dancing with the Stars has inspired all those children and also just the entire deaf community, Daniel. Really? It's really nice to see this stuff happen after the Oscars with CODA because I feel like we've changed the world a bit and people are looking at us differently and we're opening the door for more opportunities for deaf people, deaf artists, deaf access everywhere. And yeah, looking back to myself when I was a kid, growing up in Duluth, Minnesota, I had no deaf role model or no one to look up to. But I heard about Marley Matlin and I knew she was successful and she got an Oscar at a young age. So now, I feel like for my generation, I get to look down at younger kids and I understand how they feel and what they're going through. And I'm proud to represent for them. I wanna show them that me being successful means that they can do whatever they wanna do. And I wanna see the younger generation chase their dreams and become whatever they wanna be. I support them. And yeah, also, you... I just wanna let you guys know, 
how important ASL is too. We have to teach deaf children and guide them because that's where they start the, building their social skills and their education and chase their dreams. So ASL is very important. Let's talk about ASL and, and what a beautiful language it is. It clearly has impacted my life, your life, your moms. You know, they are as inspiring as you are. Your aunt uh, adopted you after your deaf parents uh, couldn't beat addiction. Your moms learned ASL and made sure you did too. Talk about how their love for you defined you and, and defines who you are right now. Yeah, you're absolutely right. First of all, I'm so thankful to my wonderful aunt, who's really my mom. So my mother's adopted me when I was 18 months old. And at that time, I had no language. I would just yell when I wanted something. And they were so enthusiastic about teaching me sign language and bringing me to be involved in deaf events. And I got to meet other deaf people. And I found out that I wasn't the only deaf person on earth. And they took me to deaf camp. And that's where I got to grow and find myself as a deaf person and find my language. And that's really led me to where I am today because of them too. My two mothers are still there and they still support me this whole time. When I became successful as an actor, they traveled the world to see me and see my plays and they were there supporting me all the time. They came to the Oscars and after that, they partied with me all night. We went to the after parties. <laughs> they, I saw my mom stay out till 5 a.m. They were so happy. They're wonderful people, and I'm so inspired by those two. They're such strong women, and they've always fought for my rights to get me education, to get me good interpreters, to have a deaf history teacher, like just little things like that. I'm so happy to have them. And again, they sign. 80% of hearing parents with deaf children don't sign. They never learn sign language, and it impacts how their children grow up. They're behind in education and social skills. So them signing led me to this, and I know they love me, and I'm so close to them. Well, we are so proud of you. And, you know, I was very lucky to, as you know, to learn sign language with, you know, my, my, my mom and my grandfather and my grandmother. Um, and so, you know, keep on being the change in this world because deaf culture needs you. And we are watching and we love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for this too. interview. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much for having me here. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.